Hello Internet, I'm your only mate and it's time for a new episode of Death Battle. This time we have Darth Vader versus Obito. Now as I should say with all my reaction videos, please click the link in the description to go watch the actual episode itself before watching mine or anyone's reactions. Don't be a dick, support the official release. Okay, so few things. One, you might notice that the lighting is a little different. Well, that's because I went to RTX and uh, the idiot that I am forgot to plug in my camera and charge it at any point. Because annoyingly I have to uh, plug this light in as well to actually use it. I've only got one socket available over here. So it's either the light or the camera. So I usually let the camera charge, plug the light in to record videos, like that sort of thing. I forgot to charge it. So it's going to be a bit dark, but you know what, given the theme of this episode, that kind of fits. You might also notice that the wall scroll on the door is different. That's because it's something that I bought home from RTX. Uh, there's some signatures on that. And uh, yeah, the answer is RTX. Which was a fantastic time, by the way. And, uh... Disclosure, there was a extended preview of this fight at RTX. Which got me all kinds of excited. So, I cannot wait to watch the rest of this episode. But before I get too ahead of myself and make this an RTX video... How do I know these characters? Well, Vader, I've known for basically most of my life. Because I got into Star Wars when I was really rather young. So... Yeah, Vader was like one of my first vi uh, villains ever. So, yeah. As for Obito, I mostly know him just from seeing people request this fight. I've learned like some stuff about him like over the years. Uh, first time I ever heard of him was through Obi-Wan vs. Kakashi. And then again in Madara vs. Aizen. So like I've heard his name before. And I have a general understanding of what he's capable of thanks to like Madara and Sasuke and Death Battle covering characters like that before so yeah now as for who I think is going to win at the moment I think Vader's gonna win and honestly of the two I hope he does because just like I'm into Star Wars so kind of want the guy I know to win but honestly, like, of what I've seen of the fight so far, it's just gonna be fun no matter what happens. So, I'm gonna put my new headphones on. I had to buy a new pair because, well, the ones I had before, the left ear just stopped working. So that was fun. So, yeah, I'm gonna put these on, shut up and hit play. Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. Obito Uchiha, secret leader of the Akatsuki. Prime examples of how you could die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And, and it's, it's our job to analyze their weapons, weapons armor, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. I actually forgot I don't do that. Let's just sync up anymore. <laughs> Perfect way to start this. Oh, thanks to the super powerful. Oh, this scene was so good. Former nice guy. Former nice guy. Uh, this I should have said. Oh, they had to throw it in there. He met Qui Gon Jinn, a Jedi who believed little. Was the chosen one and would bring balance the Princess to the Ahsoka and Quizzes no the Star Killer? Mm -hmm. No, he took him under his wing to become the Papa he never had. Or so was the plan. Until. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, Qui Gon's apprentice became Anakin's mentor. But while Anakin sought a father figure. That should have made me laugh as much as it did. 
I'm sure that won't cause any awkward tension whatsoever. Drama and surely not. Aside, Anakin quickly became a powerful Jedi. He excelled in lightsaber combat and the Force, an energy field that binds all living things together. The Force lets <laughs> Jedi move stuff with their mind, fend off mental attacks, predict the future, and make people believe these aren't the droids they're looking for. <laughs> they're basically space wizards. Through rigorous training and a not unnoticeable uh, well, natural talent, Anakin was particularly skilled in the Form 5 okay. lightsaber fighting style. Shien and Jem So. Also known as the Way of the Crate Dragon. You know that big sand dragon Mando blew up from the inside? Yeah, make that a lightsaber. Form 5 <laughs> is incredibly versatile, well suited for defending against lightsaber and blaster alike. It focuses on blending parries with devastating counterattacks, aiming to win duels through overwhelming pressure. Perfect for the Padawan who just bulldozed his way through training to become a Jedi Knight. Even as a newly knighted Jedi, Anakin could keep up with some of the most experienced Jedi Masters and Sith Lords of his time. But he had plenty of other problems to deal with, like his late yeah. rebellious teenage angst. I mean, you don't just throw a kid into space monk school and expect him to forget everyone he ever cared about, right? Well, apparently, that's what he was supposed to do. The life of a Jedi can be difficult and cold, something Anakin could not accept. And so, rather than let his secret wife die in childbirth, he was seduced you know, to the dark side through the process. Being able to use the Force and have a lightsaber sounds so cool. But actually having to live as a Jedi... Mm. But thanks to his I don't know. Sith Master Palpatine, our young warrior was saved, reborn, rebuilt. He was now Darth Vader. Vader is a badass. Everyone knows it, and they're terrified of him. I mean, just look at the guy. As yeah, honestly. Appears, you might be surprised by its quirks. See, while the Jedi view the Force as an ally, the Sith see it as a tool from which they draw power through passion and emotion. Most potently, negative emotions. Palpatine trained Vader by not only making him believe he killed his wife, but also ensuring he would never forget the monstrous machine he had become. By making the suit suck ass and piss him off. Seriously, Vader hates this suit. The armor would be better I don't blame him. just to annoy him, and the life support system was outdated from the start. Sometimes it would even turn off for several minutes. That doesn't seem good for someone with burnt up lungs. And it was so heavy and cold. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes even resorting to moving himself with the force. <laughs> oh man, I knew Palpy was evil, but I never knew he was such a dick. Well, despite these issues, the armor fulfilled its true purpose. Crafting Darth Vader into the equivalent of a slasher movie villain commanding a galactic army. Nobody wants to mess with him. Thanks to the dark side of the force, he can make maelstroms that blast everything away, form barriers that shield from all sorts of attacks, and choke anything that's even a minor inconvenience. Hell, sometimes it's most iconic thing, aside from breathing. One time, a droid named I-5 tried to kill Vader with a laser stated <laughs> to move 300,000 kilometers per second. That's light speed, and Vader easily blocked it. And for as much mm. bullshit as Palpatine threw at him, Vader was tough enough and stubborn enough to push through it. Palpatine knew that Vader would eventually try to kill him and take over the Empire. It's how the Sith work. So he constantly yeah. banned Vader's hatred by sending assassins after him to make sure he was still worthy of being his apprentice. Oh, that's Jesus. nothing. One time, he blasted off most of Vader's robo-limbs, destroyed his armor, dropped him back on the lava planet, and told him to make his way back without the Force. An impossible... Oh, God! <laughs> yet one Vader accomplished. Yeah, because he really, really, really wants to kill Palpatine. And that hatred is apparently useful in keeping Force wielders alive, and has sustained many Sith in conditions that would otherwise kill them. Like Darth Maul losing his lower half. I hate it a little more. Vader has killed hundreds, possibly thousands of Jedi, including Obi-Wan himself. He's fought entire armies on his own, and even taken on monsters the size of mountains. He's so unstoppable, an assassin droid hired to kill him quit the job because he calculated that Vader was impossible to kill. <laughs> and in Ewok's material from the old Legends canon, a real deep cut, we know, lesser dark side users like the Night Sister Shirall overpowered the Sunstar, an ancient artifact capable of shifting moons, a feat which would require energy oh. worth over 12 septillion tons of TNT. That's 24 <laughs> zeros! But if you want something more recent, Surprise I'm bringing up the Kid Doran feat. On it, and he's fine. But thanks to both his incredible power and the mercy and trust of his secret son, Vader would eventually avenge the atrocities of Palpatine. Even more important, he finally saved someone he loved. Ultimately, Anakin Skywalker truly did bring balance to the Force.
eventually until the new movie came out. <laughs> Hokage, the leader of the Hidden Leaf Village and their strongest ninja, respected and loved by all. Let's go to Obito. Many have strived for it. One such striver, sadly lacking in parents, wanted to both help people and be acknowledged by the rest of the village. And what better way to do that than having your face carved into a mountain? If you think of talking about Naruto, guess again. This is the story of Obito Uchiha. Obito unfortunately lacked the natural talent for ninja arts attributed to his Uchiha bloodline. So he signed up for ninja school and eventually joined a team with his rival Kakashi, his crush Reem, and their leader Minato. Where do you think I can get into it? And now for things to go horribly wrong. Form of chakra, a limited form of physical and I remember this story from uh, Kakashi. And naturally can be weaponized. He can use it to run up walls and make clones of himself, but even better, blow shit up! This is ninjutsu. Among its many techniques include elemental attacks, and the Uchiha specialize in all things fire. Big fireballs, small fireballs, waves of fire, columns of fire, you name it, they've got it. So when Ninja World War 3 came along, it totally made sense to get this fire ninja involved at the age of... 11. Yikes! Well, yeah, yikes. <laughs> one more secret weapon up his sleeve. Er, I suck it. The Sharingan. The Sharingan grants extreme. Eventually, the Mangekyo Sharingan. Blow of chakra, predict an enemy's attack, cast a variety of Genjutsu illusions, and even break out of said illusions. Too bad he didn't get to use the red eyes much. Like ten minutes after he got the damn things, he got smushed under a big rock. What a way to go! But since he was and he gave that one to uh, Kakashi. Eyes anymore, he handed one off to Kakashi, and then he died. The end. Except not really. Just kidding. Miraculously, Obito survived long enough to be rescued by another Uchiha, the legendary Madara. Madara granted Obito a new body, regenerating the limbs he'd lost. You're probably thinking, oh, what a swell guy. Except he was not. Madara yeah. was brewing some plans for world domination and needed a pawn to carry them out. So he tricked Obito into watching Kakashi kill Reen, making him fall victim to the Uchiha's curse of hatred. Within the Uchiha clan, there exists an ideal of being extremely devoted to love. It has been speculated that if a particularly powerful Uchiha loses someone important to them, that love will be replaced with an all-consuming hatred. This is how Obito awakened his Mangekyo Sharingan. Or Red Eye 2.0, the Mangekyo gave him a new jutsu called Kamui. With it, he can suck his foes into another dimension and leave them there to die. He can even yeah, I remember this. In there until he needs them, like his gun by fan. But even better, he can phase through stuff. Well, not quite. Kamui gives Obito the power to move through objects in a manner that's similar to the common phasing superpower into the Flash or Kitty Pride. In reality, it's much more yeah. complex. <laughs> Obito is actually teleporting parts of his body into the Kamui dimension whenever they I need to pay attention to what was the saying, but I'm distracted by Boomstick. Well, if it looks like hey, Mechagoo like Sour. Wait, is he gonna talk? Oh. Way later on, he also I guess that'll be later. Super eye. Man, he's really swapping these things around like a prime sub on Twitch. <laughs> Renegon grants Obito the power of nice. the six paths, giving him some nifty abilities like controlling gravity with the Deva path, ripping out souls with the human path, and summoning giant monsters with the animal path. With all of the awful stuff he'd gone through, Obito realized that the ninja world was corrupt to its core. His dream of everyone being happy and working together was never gonna happen. So instead, he agreed to carry out Madara's giga brain plan to control everything. Donning masks and multiple personas, he recruited a number of rogue shinobi to form the Akatsuki terrorist group and kicked off Ninja World War 4. All to revive the monstrous Ten Tails. I know what you're thinking. Wasn't the whole point of this to stop war in the first place? And that's a very good question. Eh, isn't and it meant to the, the war to end all wars? A massive, near inexhaustible chakra. The Ten Tails possesses tremendous power. It can create massive thunderstorms and hurricanes, multiple clones of itself, and the devastating tailed beast bomb. Forget bomb. That's basically a super nuke. This chakra ball is so explosive, it can eclipse continents and reduce mountains to dust. Comparing the surface area of this black oh boy. The mountains, dispersing that much mass within a fraction of a second must have yielded a kinetic energy worth over 13 septillion tons of TNT. That's 24 <laughs> zeros! 
Again, Obito wanted <laughs> the power again. for himself and was willing to throw hands with anyone to get it. He's held up against master ninjas like Kakashi, Minato, and even Naruto in his monster energy drink form, which could outmaneuver the fastest attack from the light speed Rakage. And he far surpassed all of them when he finally okay. stole the Ten Tails within himself, becoming its Jinchuriki. This little makeover granted him unlimited flight, power rivaling the legendary Sage of Six Paths, and the truth-seeking orbs. These special little yeah, those things, uh... ...into any form the user wants, like a stamp, giant arms, an umbrella thing, or... Those things could be an issue. ...blade that apparently helped shape the whole world. Oh, holy shit, it's huge! The truth-seeking orbs can completely disintegrate anything they touch at both a molecular and spiritual level. Only those with the power of the six paths can resist their effects. Plus, with the mangle monster in his system, Obito's regeneration got amped to the point where he can survive having half of his body control alt deleted away. All cards in his hand, he was ready for the final stages of the Giga Plan. He summoned the God Tree and prepared to launch the infinite Tsukuyomi, a powerful illusion that would trap the entire world in a never-ending dream, free of conflict and sorrow. But the violent cruelty of the ninja world could only quiver in fear when the anime protagonist walked in the room. <laughs> After getting one tooed by some talk no jutsu, Obito saw within Naruto the spirit of his former self, someone who was always trying to help others. And they'd say his heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> Obito joined Naruto and Kakashi in saving the world, giving his life to protect his friends. And in his last moments, he entrusted them with reaching the dream he had so long ago to become Hokage, of which they both succeeded. Though he may have lost his ninja way, Obito Uchiha overcame his hatred and helped realize the world he wanted. And pause. Okay. So, they made a pretty good case for Obito, I'm not gonna lie. Uh... However, I'm still thinking uh, Vader at the moment. Uh, partly because, much like with Rocket Raccoon, I feel like there's stuff that they're holding back for Vader. Uh, because I know they didn't bring up the Kip Doron feat, which they scaled Yoda and Obi-Wan to. And I don't really see a reason why Vader wouldn't scale to that e either. Um, the truth-seeking orbs, those could be, like, a big issue, but at the same time, what's stopping Vader from just using the Force, like, redirect them, and then F Obito up a new one? Um, and I think I remember hearing that Vader could, like, feed off of, like, negative emotions from, like, others, and that's kind of what they're both about, so... Uh, that's a thing too. And of course, there's the whole, like, Obito has a limited supply of chakra, whereas Vader has, like, the Force, which is, like, external and everywhere. Though, at the same time, it's not exactly limitless, because too much strain can... Like... Anyway. But yeah, at the moment, I'm still leaning more towards Vader. Uh... Might go into a little bit of, uh, more detail after the fight, because it's to do with the extended preview. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I will mention when it's 100% blind. So, uh, I'm going to stop talking and resume. Alright, All right, the commands are set. We've Let's end. For all possibilities, it's time, time for a death battle! And the door's open. I sense your fear, your anger, and a power. I like how he's just like on top of his TIE fighter for some reason. That power will save this cursed world. Also, if I didn't know beforehand, I would not have guessed that's Nicholas Andrew Louis. God damn. Also, it's great to hear him back. The end. <laughs> no. I won't disappoint. Yep, fans aren't gonna cut it. 
I love that shot. <laughs> they make Vader look really cool in this fight. <laughs> Gives him no fucks. Hi, <laughs> right, Padme. And oh, there goes the showering gun. And reveal his eye. That is that is a cool shot. I love how that's his reaction. <laughs> and two to minus. 100% blind from here on out. I better just watch out for those orbs. <laughs> the glowing red eyes. Jesus. Get the sense this isn't gonna work. At least I hope. I mean, it shouldn't. I don't think. You are liberated from hell. Find peace in the next life. Wait, did that work? Oh! Well, Vader may have been able to well, shit! One, but he just couldn't handle Obi-2. This was a fairly complex matchup. Both Darth Vader and Obito were roughly even in power and speed, so it truly came down to their skill and arsenals. And boy, did they have some deep bags of tricks. Even some of the same tricks. Both could fend off mental attacks. Both could move things around with their minds. And they both even had options to instantly kill each other. Vader could simply hmm. force crush Obito's body, but Obito could just as easily rip out Vader's soul. However, Obito had a few more impressive options available to him, edging out just enough to earn a win. For starters, Kamui made Obito extremely difficult just to touch, let alone injure. And as a Jinchuri, right. he could regenerate from half of his body getting destroyed. While the dark side could help Vader survive extreme conditions, it obviously can't regrow limbs. Plus, thanks to his wide array of jutsu, Obito would eventually overwhelm Vader. While Chakra may normally be a limited source of energy, unlike the Force, the Ten Tails provided Obito with an unlimited supply. Oh, I didn't, spiritual and I didn't think about that. This means Obito would be able to fight on indefinitely. Last but not least, Vader's preference for lightsaber combat means that he'd be up close and personal with Obito, right? Which left him vulnerable to getting disintegrated by one of the many truth-seeking orbs. Or even worse, sucked up into the Kamui dimension. Yeah, don't forget about that. Not only would he have no way out, he probably wouldn't even be able to tap into the force while stuck there. Game over. Have fun starving to death, I guess. Wonder how long you can feed on hate. Darth Vader may have had a tenacity that few others could match, but against Obito's similar might busted All right, fair enough. overwhelming range of abilities, there was no escape. In the end, Vader's victory just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> is Obito Uchiha. Congrats, Obito. Thanks Not how I thought it would go. We have a new death battle releasing every two weeks. Fair enough, year. and hey, but another win for Nicholas Andrew Louis. Planet level members even see death battles before anyone. Alright, what's next? Out. 
Oh! Oh, so they're doing that after all. <laughs> okay, so real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and admit. A uh, big reason I thought Vader was going to win is because the preview RTX ended at the um, 2 to minus uh, till Beast Bomb shot. So I thought that was just Vader, like, absorbing it and he was probably going to win after that. Uh, so, much like Rocket, I put too much faith in, like, them hiding stuff. Oh well. Uh, to be fair, Death I'll do that, so. But yeah, that was an awesome fight. I'm still taking it back a little bit because uh, I think just the main consensus was that Vader wins, so seeing Obiso win was like, wait, what? But yeah, fair play. I get the reasoning. Like, makes sense. And. It was probably in, like, a black box or something, but I'm surprised they didn't bring up the Kip Doran feat. Uh. Hmm. Or, I don't know, maybe that's... Yeah, I'll, I'll have to go back and, like, check the, like, black boxes and stuff. Because it's probably in there, if anything. But, yeah, that was a really cool fight. I'm willing to say might be my new favorite of the season, so short after Stitch versus Rocket. Uh, but... Actually, just in terms of, like, fight, this is probably it. <laughs> I mean, it sucks to see Vader lose again, but... Now, yeah, what can you do? And next time, Jean Grey, the Phoenix versus Raven. I'm just gonna be upfront, my money is on the Phoenix. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, from what I remember, the Phoenix Force is kind of meant to be, like, uh, equal to the likes of Scarlet Witch, <laughs> who is, um, ridiculous. And, uh... Well, then again, like, Raven might have something, like, ridiculous that wasn't brought up in a death battle against Twilight that I just, I just don't know. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, at least initially I think Phoenix is gonna win, but, uh, who knows. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up, so... Thank you for watching, all of that stuff, and here is my best girl outro. Bye. This is Blake Belladonna with Your Only Mate saying like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.